How do you define and measure well-being? Oh, wow. That's a great question. You know, we have been in the field studying uh, Americans since the advent of the pandemic back in March of 2020. I think I had hair when I started our project, <laughs> but uh, I believe it. Through, <laughs> through, the, through the course of all this weekly polling, guys, one of the things that was so fascinating was just this interchange of emotions ranging from fear to anxiety yeah. to boredom to loneliness. And they would literally kind of shift with the news mm-hmm. cycles all, all through sort of the last couple of years. But I think I would define well-being right now is um, a rising sort of sense of self. And you're going to see that in some of the discussion we get into the fact that there is a massive shift toward uh, mental health and wellness, another big shift toward uh, building balance. And with the labor market being what it is, uh, people that are at work right now feel a stronger sense of freedom and empowerment uh, versus perhaps previous right. generations or pre pandemic. So I think overall, that that sense of sort of identity and, and well-being is something that is is a real main focus. Yeah. Alan, as someone at the forefront uh, of quantifying and cataloging human emotion, are there parts of what John said that, that are that are in alignment with your approach and your philosophy? Totally. I also think that it's about emotion, and maybe maybe those go hand in hand. Maybe feeling empowered, maybe feeling independent, like you have control over your life. Uh, it really does factor into feeling good all the time. I mean, I think you had it in your intro, Matt. It's about feeling good and not feeling bad. Um, one of the things people get wrong probably about measuring well-being is that it's not all about one metric. It's about a diversity of experiences. Um, it's about feeling uh, like there's emotional richness in your life mm. um, and that your life isn't uh, kind of flat, that you're not feeling uh, repetitive, uh, that you're forming new memories every day, that you're learning more things. Um, and it can involve feeling negative at times when you want to feel negative. Maybe you want to feel fear in response to a horror movie. Um, maybe you want to feel sadness at a funeral, get some catharsis out of that. Um, so it's not just about feeling good. It's about feeling the right emotions at the right time. It's interesting. You know, can someone outwardly project happiness, but not necessarily be well? Can- uh, Dakar, I'd love your thoughts there. Alan, you kind of answered a little bit that for me. Yeah, I mean, and I think that I'm going to converge with John and Alan, you know, with measurement wise, this vast literature on well-being asks people how satisfied are you with life or a couple items like that. But then but that in some sense is unsatisfying, even though it's really powerful in terms of telling you how the person is doing health wise, work wise. And underneath is the real action, which is the emotions that John talked about. Yeah. Are you bored? Are you anxious? Are you exhilarated? Are you interested? Are you grateful? And so I think, you know, part of what Alan's work did is said, there are like these 25 pathways to happiness and each of us is figuring them out in this neat mixture. So to me, uh, and Danny Kahneman talked about this too, the Nobel Prize winner, part of well-being is is your emotional profile, part of it's your sensory profile, right? That, you know, am I mm-hmm. having good tastes in life and uh, scents and sounds? So experience is really important and emotions are an important role there. 